feel refreshed. This crib is luxurious. I just had the best night's sleep of my life. So if you want to learn how to make this crib, so your little one can have the best night's sleep of their life, stick around, I'm gonna show you how. Welcome back. I'm Brent from Valala Custom Woodworking. Hope you enjoyed that intro. Before we get into this project, there are safety guidelines to follow for building and finishing a crib. So make sure you're familiar with those guidelines. And if there's anything you see during this build that you're not comfortable with for the crib for your little one, well, don't do it. All right, let's get into this. This crib's made from soft maple. I use four quarter, five quarter, and seven quarter soft maple. The tops of the front, side, headboard, as well as the dental molding are all milled from four quarter lumber and I, they were three quarters of an inch thick. The slats for the front and sides, as well as the planks on the headboard were milled from five quarter and those pieces ended up one inch thick. And then the top and bottom rail, as well as these side pieces that uh, are meet up against the corner posts were milled from seven quarter material and they were one and a half inches thick. The corner posts were milled from two pieces of seven quarter glued together and those ended up two and a half inches thick. So for this project, I mainly used the Festal Domino Joiner to secure everything together, but there's many ways to do that. If you don't have the Domino Joiner and don't want to invest in it, which is understandable, then you could use traditional mortise and tenon joinery. You could do biscuit joinery. You could use dowels, pocket hole screws. If you're gonna use pocket hole screws, you might wanna do it from the back side and plug them so they're not gonna be as noticeable. You could even just use screws. So you could screw in from the top side and secure everything with screws and same with the bottom side. You probably would want to countersink that a little bit though, so you're not drilling through three and a half inches of material here. Uh, but the point is, a lot of different options. You don't have to use the Festal Domino Joiner. It's just what I chose to use because I have access to it and helps the project move a little bit quicker. Something I always want to know when I'm starting a project, how long would this take? About how long should I expect it to take and expect it to cost? So building this for myself, there's about $400 of material here. And then there's also about 80 hours of time. Again, that's going to vary depending on the technique you're using, your skill level. You could definitely build it for less with different materials, and you could definitely spend more uh, depending on the materials you choose. All right, so what I'm going to show you here first in this next part here is the actual work being done with some descriptions. And then at the very end of the video, I give you a much more detailed tour of the entire project. And that's actually where I would suggest to start at the end. So if you're more comfortable with woodworking, maybe you can jump right into it, but it wouldn't be a bad place to start either way to go to the end, see a detailed overview of the project, and then come back and watch me build it. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Glad to answer them. Good luck and enjoy.
your crib's all finished, thought it might be helpful to talk through some of the details here and hopefully I'll give a little clarification to what you just watched in the video. So let's start around the back side here. So this top rail corner post and this top um, trim piece are all flush with each other. They all sit flush there. And then the same thing down here with this bottom piece, this bottom rail, it sits flush with the back side of the corner post. And the headboard here, the main part of it, these planks are one inch thick. So there is a quarter inch gap, quarter inch, excuse me, reveal uh, all the way around there. Uh, so that's inset basically a quarter inch. While we're here, let's look at the corner, or excuse me, let's look at the side. So the top, side, side, and bottom are all one and a half inch thick. And then this piece and this piece are one and 11 sixteenths of an inch wide. And these rails, okay, those are all two and an eighth inch wide and they all have a two and an eighth inch gap between them. And the rails are also 26 and a half inches tall. And this side component is 26 inches wide. So the side components are what are removable and that's where the threaded, the threading goes. I wanted to try to hide it best I could. So there's basically a bull at the top and bottom of the front part. And same here on the back side. So one thing I did run into, really minor, uh, basically the domino tenon I used to attach these two components was just a little too long, about an eighth of an inch. That bolt was run into it, so I just trimmed the domino tenon. Uh, or you could just move these up a little bit. And then on the front here, same thing really as the sides, the top, side, bottom, and side piece are one and a half inches thick. These ones are a little bit more narrow. These are one and seven sixteenths, the one on the very ends. And that just basically allowed the spacing and rails on the vertical uh, pieces to be identical. So same thing again, all these vertical components are two and an eighth inch wide. They are all 26 and a half inches tall and the gaps are all two and an eighth of an eight, two and an eighth inch. So the trim pieces up top here, they overhang here. Okay, so this is, and they overhang on the inside. So this is two and seven eighths of an inch wide. And same for all of these, this one, this one, and that one. The trim pieces that cap off the top of the side rail and the front just match up flush with the inside edges of the corner post. So that's the side rail. And here is the front. Let's take a closer look now at some of the details of the headboard. So this V notch, I actually just added before I glued the board together. Just put a chamfer on the boards and then glue them up. Just don't go uh, too wild with the glue or you'll be dealing with a lot of squeeze out. And then this dental molding here, this is one inch wide and then the gaps are a half inch wide and this piece is two inches tall. And there ends up being about a quarter inch reveal right there uh, because this piece is an inch and a half thick this is three quarters of an inch thick, so that's two and a quarter, and then the corner posts are two and a half, so there's your quarter inch. And then they cap for the top, just like the front and sides, this is two and seven eighths wide. And the overhang here matches the overhang on the front. One more bit of information about the headboard here. So, this is all obviously solid wood. It needs room to contract and expand. Basically, I handled this like a breadboard setup. So there are eight planks. And so these middle two planks are glued in place. And then these top three and these bottom three 
are set up where they can contract and expand. And I did that two different ways uh, or two ways basically that work together with each other. All the dominoes that are glued in the rails, these corner posts are uh, in on the tight setting as well as the dominoes that were plunged into the two middle planks. Those are on the tight setting. And then the top three and the bottom three are on the loose setting and they do not get any glue in the actual planks here. Everything in the corner post, all the tenons in the quarter post are glued. The tenons in the two middle parts are glued. Uh, and then these ones, these three, and these three are just floating. No glue and they're plunged on the wide setting. And then in addition to that, so that allows it to contract and expand, but it has to have somewhere to go. So in this top rail and the bottom rail down here, that's where I put a one inch deep notch and these this headboard is a half an inch wider than this gap so basically the headboard sits in this top rail a half an inch and it sits in this bottom rail a half an inch and then there's an extra half inch gap at both the top and bottom so basically you can have a it can expand and contract a half inch and uh in both directions or an inch overall basically so hopefully that makes sense there okay i'm inside the crib here here's the system i came up with to adjust the height of the platform that will hold the mattress so it's just these blocks in the corners basically uh the things i was thinking about here is i didn't want these threaded inserts to be exposed when it was on the lowest setting and so the heights I came up with that would work for that are seven inches, 10 inches, and 13 inches. And these blocks are three inches tall. And the holes are uh, five sixteenths of an inch. I always drill my holes a little bit wider than the bolt. And the bolt is a quarter 20. And on the inside edge here, this was obviously a very sharp corner. So this serves two purposes. I put a very heavy chamfer on that and it just eliminates that really sharp edge because almost all of this will be exposed. So eliminates that really sharp edge for the little man and then it also makes it easier. It gives me a flat surface to apply my, to insert my threaded inserts and to get this block uh, matched up against. And then on the back here, this has to have this gap here because when it's on the lowest setting this part of the headboard is inset a quarter inch from this part of the headboard so that's why there's this quarter inch gap and this bolt uh, excuse me these threaded inserts here on the back are just centered a half inch off the front edge there's also a cross brace here that runs from the front to the back of the crib just helps eliminate any racking that there might be and it's attached with quarter 20 bolts and those are secured into threaded inserts well the very last part here before popping the platform in is whoever you made this for write them a little special note and for our son nico I made you in this crib, shirtless, love dad. The platform is two layers of three quarter inch Baltic birch and it's trimmed with maple to hide the exposed edges. The front corner is cut to match that 45 degree angle and the back corner is notch to match that detail as well. The last part I want to talk about is the mattress. This was one of my main concerns during the design and build process. I just wanted to ensure that all the sides would fit snug and I'm really happy with the fit. Just so you know, we're using the Pottery Barn Kids Lullaby Crib Mattress. It's 27 and a half inches wide, 52 inches long and six inches thick. And that leaves about 16 inches to the top rail on the highest setting and on the lowest setting it will leave about 22 inches. If you have any questions 
please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about the crib and this build. Thanks for watching.